What's going on guys? So obviously I am in a bit of a different setting today for this video, and that is because I am in someone else's studio. Hey John! Oh, the doctor's in. Ah! John, thank you for having me yeah. over here at Refinery Fragrances. Well, thank you for having me in the studio. And you know what? I was feeling a little bit under the weather and the only prescription comes from the doctor himself. Uh-huh. Dr. Magnificent. So we're here. We are going to be talking about our top five holy grails of all time. Let's get into it. Before we hop into the video, as always, please don't forget to hit subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton and also hit the bell icon for notifications for all future uploads. Speaking of subscriptions, if you are not subscribed to his channel, you must change that right now and I will leave a link to his channel down in the bio. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. All right, well, let's get into this top 10 list of Holy Grails. Holy Grails. What? your quest to seek the holy grail i have a lot of fragrances as do you and we've been smelling fragrances for quite some time and to narrow it down to five is kind of a tough task but i think we did a good job how did you feel about kind of having to comb through this massive collection and pick to, out your top to be honest john my brain felt like that guy in indiana jones when he drinks from the wrong holy grail and he's like ah, what's happening ah! My brain was scrambled eggs trying to figure out what I love the best. It's like fick ficking. It's like picking your favorite children. It's like ficking your favorite children. Yeah, yeah, English, <laughs> As cool. they say. Yeah. <laughs> I was homeschooled. Coming in at number five is from the company Goldfield and Banks. This is Purple Suede. This fragrance is incredible. It has that kind of like green, spicy, patchouli thing, but there's some smokiness. If you're familiar with Tuxedo by Yves Saint Laurent, this fragrance, and I've talked about it recently on our Instagram, but it kind of gives me vibes of Tuxedo, but I prefer this over Tuxedo. Really? It is more potent uh, on my skin and it is smokier. So in the really, really cold months, this is a monster. Uh, I don't know that you've smelled this. I yet. haven't. So we need to get your strills on. But you this. know what else we can do? Hold on. We're gonna compare it directly to Tuxedo. Uh-oh. Okay. Cause I have it right here. A little A-B comparison. <laughs> so at the top, you'll notice it is like an overdose of smoke. And I think that Ooh, there is nice. violet leaf in here, which I believe is also in Tuxedo. So mm -hmm. I think that's where the comparison is coming. And patchouli, from. I guess, patchouli, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's not like a dark, gothic, chocolatey patchouli. It's okay. more of that like aromatic green type of patchouli. By the way, the, the air is gonna smell incredible in here. It's gonna be like walking through a Macy's. Dude, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't wanna offend our fragrances. I'm gonna say it's, it's gonna be like walking through Harrods. Thank you, thank it's you. It's gonna be like walking through Harrods. Neiman Marcus. Yes, yeah, Neiman yeah, Marcus, yeah. Saks Fifth <laughs> Avenue. I will live and die by this guy right here. Me? Tuxedo, king of patchouli. And I agree. I have Tuxedo. Mm. I've been wearing it for years. It is one of the sexiest designer fragrances I've probably ever smelled. This is very similar, and it just amps up that smokiness, and I'm all into smoky, tobacco, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. boozy, ooh, dark, resinous type things. This is like a tuxedo extreme, if you will. Why don't you give that now, a sniff? You're talking my language. Tell, tell me also, you your girl likes this on YouTube. She loves oh, yeah, yeah. tuxedo. Oh, yeah. she, she likes it on Oh, yeah. yeah. And All you right. know what? She loves purple suede as well. And it's funny because I sprayed that on, or I sprayed tuxedo on, and she goes, something smells like blueberry pancakes. For some reason, she associates it with blueberry pancakes. Oh. I don't get that, personally. <laughs> but she said the same thing about both it. fragrances separately. So really? I know that they have a similarity to them. But yeah, I would say like in the winter, I might wear tuxedo throughout the day if it's really really cold outside i'd reach for purple suede i can see the blueberry pancake comparison yeah there's a little bit of like a sweet berry yes okay yes you get that i, I don't know if you implanted that in my head and now that's all i can think about power, but this is power this, suggestion this is the ultimate thing to wear to ihop yeah <laughs> Now compare it to tuxedo. Yeah, it, it, it smells bolder, stronger. I want to say this too. I don't <sighs> think they're clones by any means. No, 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 no. Um, they're they're, they're clones, very different, yeah. But they kind of have somewhat of a similar DNA, especially in the dry down. What they do you kind, think? Yeah, they're certainly different. As, as, they, as they dry down, they start to remind you of each other. Exactly, okay. exactly. Gotcha. I've just fallen in love with it recently. That's something that has cut through the cold. Um, Woo, it gets yeah. me compliments. My wife likes it, so it's a winner. Well, speaking of uh, fragrances that really 
cut through the cold. I have to put up the Don oh, by Zerzhov. And there's four notes. And that's four it. Notes? Whiskey, tobacco, gunpowder, and spun sugar. Oh my goodness. I've smelled this before. I need to revisit this Crap because it, it's been it's been a minute. Oh god. The, the name itself is just so gangster. It's like it, it feels very gangster. It's hard to deny. I feel like I'm in the Goodfellas or something. Yeah. <laughs> forget about it. Forget about it. I can't forget about you it. Can't. I'll I, never forget I about can, it. I simply can't forget about it. <laughs> Yikes! It is just a monster. I feel like I just got mowed over. <laughs> Insane, dude. And wow. you know what? When I wear it, Mad, mad, mad compliments. I can, I can totally see from that. randos because you said whiskey and tobacco mm -hmm. from the sugar. There's yeah. that just light layer dusting, if you will, and gunpowder, which we've all smelled gunpowder. Yeah, everyone That's knows gunpowder. Dead on. We all have muskets <laughs> lying around. Uh, I don't expect anything less from Zerzhov. Zerzhov makes incredible fragrances that are complex but wearable. And beast, and beast, beast, and th that checks my three boxes right there. Takes me back to when I was working at that uh, Civil War reenactment place, uh, <laughs> Tennessee Civil War. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that old chestnut. Man, this is good. Okay, it's so good. If I had this in my collection, this could buy for a top. <laughs> it, five it's not spot. one. I wouldn't say it's signature scent worthy. I don't think it's something you wear all year round. But in the winter time, if you want to get noticed, spring nights, this would yeah. rip. A little bit of heat just helps it kind of jump off the mm -hmm. skin. That's stunning. Oh that had to be in my list. Yeah. I don't blame you. That's all right, what's your number four? All right, so number four is a fragrance that uh, I believe came out in 2022, if I'm not mistaken, and I discovered it last year. Oh. And ever since that point, it's kind of been difficult to stop wearing it. Really? I, I admittedly, I have two 100 ml bottles and I'm just addicted to it. It gets me a ton of compliments. This is Ensalade by Marc Antoine Barrois. This is rhubarb and vetiver. It's a bit smoky. I believe that at least the marketing for it was that it was supposed to be reminiscent of like a jungle near a volcano that's about to explode. I like essentially. That. So All right. It smells hot. <laughs> it smells steamy. Mm. It smells green and a little bit fresh, very and spicy. And too much of it could kill you. And too much of it, <laughs> too much, listen to me, listen to me. Listen. Too much of this stuff will, <laughs> Well, I don't want to get demonetized on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, but not, it, yeah, no, no. it will choke some people <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. This stuff is like nuclear in terms of before. I can smell it already off the atomizer without even... Oh, damn. So I'm going to give it a spray away from anything else. This, yeah, th this to me is sexiness in a bottle, masculinity in a bottle. It is... <laughs> it is on another planet. God, now I need to get it. Crap. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. I can really get that vetiver yes. in there. It's just like a lot of Mab. It's like edgy. It's got a lot of attitude. They kind of have a similar theme running throughout the fragrance. He's kind of got a, a DNA laced throughout a lot of his releases. So yeah. We're not getting paid by Marc Antoine Barwa, by the way. <laughs> but I will say. Not a sponsor. Like, not a sponsor <laughs> yet, but uh, they don't miss. Yeah. It doesn't smell anything like Ganymede. No, it doesn't. Check them out back to back. Because Ganymede has that kind of oceanic, minerally. Totally in a different direction. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'll say is that you will get ever so slight nuances of the dry down of Ganymede in the dry down oh, okay, okay. of Ensalade. It's very, very slight. You do have to look for it, but I will kind of catch a whiff later yeah. in the day after it's been on for six, seven, eight hours. And I'm like, I kind of get that like mineral quality. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. To it. I can see that. I, I, I like out. when a brand has its own unique voice, but yes. where the releases aren't so similar to where it makes it redundant to own both. I know? agree completely. Yeah. Like all of Marc Antoine Barois's fragrances are unique mm -hmm. and long lasting and so different. And yeah. big fan of what they're doing with the X traits. And uh, Marc Antoine Barois, if you're listening. X-rate version, perhaps? I don't know. Considering what a total game changer Ganymede was and still is, the, this DNA to the fragrance world, that was a bold move. Going with that one instead, going with Ensalade. Yeah, I know, I feel like it's under the radar. Wow. It's under the radar, and people, when they smell it, they're like, what is happening? I went into Target one time, got two unsolicited compliments while I was walking around in mm -hmm. Target. This is a high compliment getter for me, and I think it just has to do with it being hyper masculine, mm -hmm. it's sweet, it's spicy, it's fresh, and I don't know, people gravitate towards it. It needs more hype, so you know what? I'm really glad that you're giving it some love. All yeah. aboard the yeah. hype train. Danny Me gets plenty of love. We Danny all know Me it. Gets a ton of love. Yeah, you know. And what? Salad. Let's go. It's time all for right. a new king in town. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna go with Nishane's Ani. Mm. Cause not only is it incredible and unique, but 
I wear it a lot. It's got the freshness from uh, citrus. It's got that cardamom fresh spiciness. And then it's got this nice sweet blanket of vanilla just giving all the notes a big loving hug. Oh, yes. It's such a boss. From the queen of vanilla herself, mm -hmm. Cecile Zerokian. Name me a perfumer that does better with vanilla. I'll I wait. can see why. It's stunning. Yeah. It's, it's creamy. Honey. I get almost like a little bit of a creamy orange <clears throat> sickle yeah. kind of a thing to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. I, I, need, I, need to, I need to get this. I have two Nishanes and I don't have Ani, which seems like a sin. I need to get this. So thanks for uh, reintroducing me to it. It's you been, need it. It's been it. years. It's you been need years. it. I need You it. need Ani. Shame on me for not. <laughs> shame on Ani. I, yeah, shame on Ani for not ah! having this. I I will get this at some point. Well, the heavy caps too. Yeah. Like, yes. That would hurt. They will ward off <laughs> home intruders and it performs probably pretty great. Another massive compliment getter just for that factor alone, the fact that it's an extrait, so it's yep. so dense. Sometimes when perfumes are more densely concentrated, they don't project as much. This thing project it, it's a foghorn yes and that's a great point too it, it will like, it will be noticed yes and i love that because i agree sometimes extraits they may sit on your skin for a long time but because there's less alcohol content in them it's going to sit a little bit closer and yeah. not be as diffusive that's what i love about extraits that really fill a room yeah i think we both kind of like our fragrances to announce themselves i certainly do i mean if you're going to spend money on fragrance you want it to be noticed yeah you can't pair a jacket yeah. this cool with a fragrance that doesn't perform it's not going to you really think my jacket's cool? Yeah, I do. Oh. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty oh. cool. That mustard yellow, wow. really, it really brings out the light in your eyes. Would you believe mustard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry now. I know, I know. I want a hot dog and I want some blueberry yeah, pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is no stranger to the fragrance community at all. It's been kind of hyped and hyped for the past few years. This is Side Effect by Anisio. This is all about rum, and I don't think vanilla is actually listed, but I do get a pretty big dose of vanilla. Hedion, tobacco, sandalwood. It's incredible. It's yeah. not overly complex. Cinnamon? Is there cinnamon? There's cinnamon yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. This is a tester <laughs> bottle, so. Oh, you got them right there. Cinnamon bark, convenient. rum, tobacco, saffron, sandalwood, and hedion. Cinnamon bark. Cinnamon bark, oh, very yeah. specific. Big, big difference. Not yeah. just that shelf cinnamon. No, or whatever. no. For not please. That, but yeah, for please. <laughs> no, this is the expensive cinnamon. Yes. Uh, to me, this is quintessential fall. When I smell this, it brings me back to the fall time. That transition from the hotter weather into the cold, the leaves start to change, Halloween's coming up. Like this fragrance is synonymous with that time period for me. It's a beast mode performer. It's a compliment getter. It's not overly complex, really. It's very no. smooth. This is, I think, a great gateway for people Although the price point is is heavy. I do think that if you're willing to kind of spend that little extra money to get something unique, this is one to look at if you're newer to niche fragrance because it is not going to kind of offend you, I don't think. But if someone's say, for instance, living in Nashville and they're looking for a really good place to shop, huh? for fragrances and get them for way cheaper than they would retail, then uh, would, would you suggest a place around here somewhere? I can't think of a, oh wait. Oh wait. Oh wait. My wife and I started a perfumery here in Nashville. If you guys are in Nashville, come see us, Refinery Fragrances. Sure, I will. And, and, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be will. there like every day. Oh, yeah. I know you will be. <laughs> so yeah, coming soon. And we do carry Anisio, by the way. Shameless plug. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Hell man. yeah. We're stoked. And I'm stoked. We, we need a perfume shop. We do. Now we got niche perfume coming to Nashville and side effect is one we're happy to carry. And yeah, I probably won't ever be without it. Um, so yes, keep an eye out. And if you're in Nashville, come see him. Come, come see, see us. us. We're in East Nashville. <laughs> Let's party. Side effect is number three for me. Absolutely love it. All right. A goat. Well, since you um, conjured the name, an, an, you called Anisio. Is it Anisio? I like that better. It's Anisio. Anisio. It's, it it almost feels like- Tingles the eardrum. Maybe I'm just being too pretentious. <laughs> 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 that could be it too. I don't know. Oh, that's definitely it. Yeah, it's but, Anisio. No. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going to bring up one from Anisio's oh. sister brand, that's Parfums right. de Marley. Yeah. Yes. And of course, of course, of course, it had to be Layton. Yes. It has to be Layton. It had can't to. not be Layton. Ah! It's honestly one of the best men's fragrances 
that has been created in the last 20 years. Oh, in my, in my yeah. opinion, I, I just, oh. it, it's hard to go with. Oh, God, so many good feels, so many tingly feelings in yes. weird places. <laughs> <laughs> another signature scent, another compliment, monster. Yep. It's got the spice. It's also got a little bit of this blue freshness to it. I always call it a perfect gateway fragrance into the niche world. Like yeah. it, it reminds you of some things in the designer world, but it, it has this depth and complexity that just like is just mind blowing again and, and also the caps are it's got an extra deadly. it's got a what the what the oh, oh my god put a hole in the floor Dude, i thought we had Woo. an earthquake <sighs> layton has what the french call a certain i don't know what but it has <laughs> It does have three cardamom. years of French class yeah, for it, nothing. For nothing. <laughs> the cardamom. It's the cardamom. There's like a eucalyptus, almost like a cooling feel at the beginning. Do you yes, pick up on yeah. that? Which makes it nice for warm weather too. Like it's versatile. Totally. And yeah. yeah, and there's a blast of bergamot in mm -hmm. the opening. So yeah. if you're looking for a Swiss army knife all year round, all seasons, all occasion, dressed up, dressed down. Obviously, I must have a thing for cardamom because <laughs> me too. One that would have made this list but I don't have it. And I wanted to bring stuff that I had and it's African leather. Oh! That is a cardamom Hold king. On. I got it. To me, the leather is not the star, it's the cardamom. I love it. Honorable mention. Yes, honorable mention. African just, leather yeah. by Memo Paris. We're gonna just slip that in there because that it's... is one of the best cardamoms. Oh, oh, and also, oh, oh my sorry. goodness. One of the sexiest fragrances I've ever smelled. Yeah, Truly. that and this one, of course, uh, intoxicated by oh. Killian. Yeah. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit of Lana Weed Loam a little bit, or Amen by Moon Yeah, Blair. I get both of those, honestly. I think the cardamom kind of gives it that Lana Weed Loam kind of a feel. Yeah. And that darker, boozy, patchouli thing gives right. it the Amen. Yeah, this is like a refined version uh, of those, but yeah, cardamom, is incredible. Part of the reason why. Sexy. Yes, yeah. it is sexy. <laughs> so I think that's why Layton is so insane. I think it checks a lot of boxes for niche lovers, but I think it has enough, you know, wearability and mass appeal for people to kind of have a gateway. Just so, so sexy. It's so sexy. I have a lot of parfums to Marley. I could have picked uh, Carlisle, Greenlee, Percival, Pegasus Exclusive, or Herod yeah. would have been great. But this is the one that I wear the most, I think. That closely maybe followed by Greenlee. And that was another factor that I was thinking about for this list was, okay, I've got like my artistic ones that I just love the smell of for me personally, but also I have the ones that I wear a ton of, and yep. this is kind of a mishmash of, of both of those things. Exactly. You know? As the fragrance community has coined dumb reach. I would not dare call this a dumb reach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's not that's not really dumb. It might be a dumb reach for niche lovers. Yes, yeah. this, is a, this is a very, very highbrow dumb reach. This is a um, require less calculations reach. Exactly. Less, requ exactly. Requiring less uh, calculative, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. It all depends on your tastes, mm -hmm. but I think yeah. if you went for something, maybe you're new to niche, you gotta check out Layton. It, it, there's a reason it's no in your top five out of all of these fragrances sitting here. Yeah. Uh, it's a winner. Again, the guy from Indiana Jones. The, yes, yeah, my yeah. brain. <laughs> it's my brain. Scramble <laughs> days. My number two mm. is, admittedly, I shied away from it because I like coffee in fragrances, Ooh. but it's not always my go-to. And I've smelled some coffee fragrances that kind of underwhelmed me, intense cafe aside. Mm -hmm. So I didn't look at this, but then when I tried it on, I was pleasantly surprised. Mm. It's not really a coffee fragrance, uh, but it's really? Beat Cafe uh. by Juice Box. This is hyper boozy, hyper woody. Spray that because I is. I'm not too familiar with Juice Box. It, I, I've been eyeing them up for a while now. This is for fans of <laughs> something like a straight to heaven. Oh, You know, perfect, that, yeah. that boozy yeah. cedar kind of a thing. This to me, it's a little fresh too. Ooh. It's a monster performer. Really? Yeah. What I'm getting in the air right now does not smell like coffee. No, and I, I, I don't believe coffee is actually a listed note. Really? Here. The name more comes from what it's inspired by. Oh. Every fragrance from Juice Box is inspired by either a genre of music or a musical artist. Ooh. This is inspired by jazz. So I think they were just going for that beat cafe, like a jazz lounge. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. I'm I'm ordering this tonight. Yeah, it is. Uh, is there a place around oh. town that you can get? You know what? Actually, I, I, I should just run down the street and go to this really yeah, cool yeah. hip joint called Refinery Fragrances in Nashville and just Any, get it from there. Yeah. Anytime, brother, anytime. But yeah, this is an absolute This This beast. might be my first purchase from your shop. It's <laughs> yeah. May 3rd is the date. Come swing by, grab some Bee Cafe. Get but in there. If you are a fan of boozy fragrances and woody fragrances with a little bit of sweetness, oh. but it still maintains just a nice masculine edge. Of course, this is unisex, but in my mind, 
it leans maybe a little masculine. Oh and, my god, and yeah. I'm in love with this. Place. Did you say vetiver in there? Or? Maybe it's the cedar I'm thinking because it, it, it has be uh, a woody, but a kind of an earthy woody. Trusty fragrantic. Ah, uh, it'll never steer you wrong. It, yeah, never ever. <laughs> They're always 100% correct. Without fail. <laughs> So it's black pepper, coriander, cognac. So, cognac. so I was actually wrong about that. Nice. It's not whiskey, it's cognac. Cognac, I love Cistus that. Cistus labdanum, black oh. leather, tobacco, vetiver, cedar wood, benzoin balm. The main players in my mind are the cognac, black pepper, and the cedar wood. Yeah. There's yeah, vetiver, yeah. so like... I, I thought there was vetiver in there, yeah. yeah. Good it's, nose. The Nash. Hey. <laughs> the nose, nose, baby. And look at the little... Uh, I love those. Vinyl cap there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a lot of glass. There's a lot of glass. <laughs> There's a lot of glass, so, lot of glass we'll and get, a little bit of juice. This <laughs> looks like 100 mil. It doesn't look like 100 mil, but it's actually a 78 Yeah, mil. it psyched me it's out. Like, <laughs> and these, feel that bottle. That's a pretty... Oh, God, yeah. That's, that's a, pretty, a brick. That's a brick. B Cafe. I can't stop smelling it. It's, awesome. it's yeah, insane. I gotta, I gotta step away. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rip it off like a band. How do I top that? Well, you know what? I, I got to do a Mace on Francis Kirk John. Yep. Because Francis Kirk John's one of my favorite perfumers. Me and it too. was really hard to select a Holy Grail from his line because, I mean, could it have been Baccarat Rouge 540? Yep. Could it have been Gentle Fluidity Silver? I wear the hell out of that in the summertime. Yep. But the one that just seems to knock everybody's socks off whenever I wear it is Grand Soir. Again, like super simple, nothing too crazy. It's just so perfectly and intelligently blended. But a lot of times I've said this about things like the modern formulations of Aventus. Sometimes when things are too calculated, it, it, it kind of loses some of its soul, but this has soul to it. I but know. also like the ultimate introductory amber fragrance. If you're not familiar with ambers, this is like the first one you should absolutely it, try out. It's quintessential. Quint Quintessential. Quint we just gave somebody a channel name. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, I'll, I'll add the graphic yeah, later. Yeah. Quintessential. Yeah. <laughs> All this, the puns. This is, when I think of ambers, this is what I think of. Yeah. The smell of this is, again, it, it's not crazy complex, but it is sweet and it is balsamic and it's resinous and the performance on me yeah. is nuclear. Really? On me, it's not nuclear, but it's Perfect. Yeah, okay. In some situations, I would prefer maybe almost less performance. Granted, can I spray less? I also try not to be offensive. Exactly. For, sure. yeah. for sure. For sure. With this, I would not do That's not true. Things. I really want to be offensive. I, yeah, I mean, if, if we're digging deep, I mean, we, 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 if we're being honest here, we, yeah. we'll, we'll do 15 sprays. We're going to hose everybody down. Yeah. I do five sprays with this. Yeah, same I, here. On like yeah, a yeah. night out. Same here. I wear this maybe once every two or three months. I don't wear it a ton, a ton. It's a go to in the fall, though, don't you think? Every, yeah. Every, oh, absolutely yes. fall. Perfect. Yes, yeah. absolutely. In the winter, time kind of after that fall period. Mm -hmm, I might mm -hmm. wear it once or twice. I think the last four or five times I've worn this, I've gotten at least one compliment. Every time I it, wear it. It's Every time without fail. It, yeah. And I think it's, there's something about Francis Kirk, John, and what he's been able to do with his fragrances. He knows what people want. Yeah. You know? yeah From yeah. creating something yeah. as massive as Lamal to Baccarat yeah, yeah. Rouge 540. And he was only 26 when he made it. That's Gosh, cra what, crazy. What was I doing at 26? <laughs> right? What oh, were we God. doing? Jeez. We're losers. This, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go cry. It's that perfect balance between really complex and really interesting, but also just so easy to love. Exactly. exactly. Anyone who smells it will fall in love with it. Yeah. And they will smell you. And they will smell they you. Will smell and they you will love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now it's time for your number one pick. Drum roll, please. There it is. There, I can hear it. Yeah. Creation E. Ah! I'm not even going to give it this long spiel. This to me is the Aventus of spicy, boozy fragrances. And what I mean by that is Aventus was the first niche perfume that blew my brain apart mm -hmm. and got me going down this rabbit yep. hole of yep. Can't perfume. deny it. Can't deny Aventus, yeah. And it, I don't think it was until I smelled Creation E, November of 2017 in New York City Ooh, at Oswald's. He remembers. I resonated with this a lot. And it, it smells like a sophisticated, classy, badass, rich guy. You want to smell wealthy? This is it. Now, granted, I had some people pitch in for my birthday to get me this, because this is not cheap. Yeah, it's you're right. Super, it's super, not. super expensive. So yeah, it kind I of- I know. Is, I have it too. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a hard thing to pull the trigger on. But um, if you can get a sample of this, if you can get a decant of this, it is cognac, tobacco, ginger, 
amongst 30 other notes. We've seen some Roja Dove note breakdowns. Yeah, there's there are a bunch 50 yeah. notes in there, you know. It rings true. What you've heard about this rings true. I get that fizzy cherry Coke kind of a vibe when I first spray this yeah. on. Almost like a flattened cherry Coke, but it's so much better than that, obviously. See, that, that's what yeah. I think about the Eau de Parfum. It smells like a flat Coke. Cherry Coke, and this cherry has a little Coke. bit more This of a, has more spice and more tingly in fizziness. I it, agree, I, I agree. I think that the ginger is more more amped up in here. That might that's be kind of giving it that. I in, think you nailed it. And, yeah. and even with the concentration, mm -hmm. you know, the concentration might be aiding in that effervescence at the top of this. But I don't ever want to be without this in my collection. I'm a Roja fanboy. We love this fragrance. We do. And we really do. I like, and look at the dent. I've had this for look at that for a few years, <laughs> but like that is a dent that when I got this bottle, I don't never. That's like I, a that's like a hundred dollar dent, right? Yeah, there. I didn't think I'd, I didn't think I'd ever see a dent like this, but I when it's date night, going to a wedding, special occasion, this is a showstopper. I'm glad you loved it because let me smell that. Yeah, give, give yeah, me that. Gotta give it. get the get the oh, oh yeah a sniff. <laughs> <laughs> Get a sniff of that macerated bottle. This is yeah. aged like a fine cone. Yes, I'm, so. I'm hoping that mine does the same. Man. At number one, Rojo Parfums. Creation E Parfum. Incredible. And I back it. Well, that was also going to kind of be my number one. So maybe I'll <laughs> maybe you'll let me share that with yes, you a little that's bit. A but number one. Creation E is the second most expensive fragrance in my collection. Oh. So I figured, uh, it, Same, well, actually. you know, since I really ponied up the dough for this one, this one was actually more oh. because it is long discontinued and really scarce, really hard to find. It must have only been out for a very short stint because on eBay, they're ridiculous. I got lucky because I found a used one from a sweet lady who was getting rid of it, but she loved it and it's got like 80% juice less. Yeah. So. And it's potent. Yeah. My, my wallet is still sore. <laughs> I sampled this one first. And when I did, I was like, crap. Yep. I can't live without it. Yep. It's Tobacco Oud Intense oh. by Tom Ford. This to me smells like you're wearing all black. You're in like a cigar lounge of some kind. You're sipping on a nice cocktail. And it, this comes across very brooding and dark. Yes. To me, but it is sexiness to the max. Oh. It's incredible. And honestly, such a shame. Yeah. It's such a shame that it's discontinued. Every time I spray it, I hear a cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> same, with, same with creation. But I, I, I also really love Tobacco Oud. Tobacco Oud could have easily fit in this list. It's funny, too, because the original Oud Wood is really smooth, and Oud Wood Intense is really more funky and animalic. Mm, yeah. And I was expecting the same thing with Tobacco Oud, but when I smelled it, it's actually, oddly, not as intense. When it comes to the scent profile. Yeah, yeah, I it's agree. It's smoother. I completely Softer. Agree. I describe it as velvety almost. Yeah, there's Sexy. a raspberry accord in this. And I think that that kind of helps it. I don't even want to say it's necessarily more wearable than the original, but there is that added kind of tart, slightly sweetness buried hmm. underneath of it that I think makes it... Buried? Buried. Buried. It's raspberried <laughs> underneath it. We love puns. I, we, we, love it. we love it. To me, if I had to go, with one or the other, it's intense. Yeah. I, they just, they took that original tobacco oud DNA and didn't change it to be unrecognizable. Sometimes companies yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a flanker here how you would want them to do a flanker. What's Tom Ford? Let's start a petition to have Tom Ford bring back the oud line. Bring it back. We love oud in America. <laughs> and right. he does oud will. I, I'm positive that it's probably an oud accord. He's probably using aroma chemicals. Yep. But Tom Ford's got the oud on lock. And when yeah. I think raspberry, too, I think about Tuscan leather. Totally. The leather raspberry. So absolutely, that seems to be kind of a go-to for him. Yeah. Well, and I might break some news here on, uh, on your channel. In today's top stories, breaking <laughs> news. <laughs> Tom Ford is releasing oud wood parfum. They are releasing a higher concentration of oud wood, and it's finally it's, it's coming soon. It's about time because so, oud wood doesn't perform that great on me. Not on me either. Sadly, it's carved dude by Tamine for me. Yeah, yes. So I'm hopeful that that fragrance does well, and it kind of puts some life back into some of the other oud fragrances that they've had in the past. We'll see. I like um, what you're saying, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm very as oud wood's one of my favorites of all time. Did Tuscan I leather. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Thought it was thought it was like a guitar I, a guitar pick. For a second, you drop I thought the it, plate maybe forever. popped out. I saw uh, her just like cling cling. Anyway, no. what were you saying? Go ahead. Just having something like this in the Tom Ford line made so much sense to me. And I know that they still do have some oud fragrances, oud mineral, yeah. and they yeah, have yeah. Oud, oud wood, obviously. It, yeah. But I think like Tom Ford and oud were synonymous 
with me for the longest time because I didn't really know Oud outside of that. Right. And yeah. so kind of brought it to the mainstream. Absolutely yeah. it did. Yeah. Um for Oud, a lot Oud, of yeah. a lot of people. So I'm with you. I, and this is your number one. That's my number one. I, I mean, I had to have a Tom Ford because Tom Ford was the designer brand that got me into niche perfumery. Same. Especially from this era yes. of Tom Ford. That's what we are diehards about. Totally. Yeah. To me, Tuscan leather is still maybe my favorite leather of all time. More than ombre leather? Yeah. Wow! I think so. I finally met someone who actually thinks that because yeah. I felt like you feel I'm that too. Everyone raves about ombre leather, and I feel like I'm the only one championing Ooh. Tuscan leather. I'm not gonna poo-poo ombre leather. All right, it's good. I love it, I lo but it, but if I had to choose, but if I had to choose, it wouldn't even really take me more than a second. I'd be like Tuscan leather. Yeah, it takes me back to a time when I was just getting into fragrance, and that is another one along with Aventus that just. <laughs> Wait, a cologne or a fragrance can smell like this? Yeah. Like, it was so out of left field that I'm like, yeah, there's, okay, there's a lot more to this fragrance world that I need yeah. to discover. So yeah, it set me on that, on that He's path. unapologetic and willing to break new ground. And you that's got, what we love about Tom yeah, Ford. You, you gotta yeah. be in the fragrance community when a lot's been done, but very worthy number one. Yes, yes. And I, I would say that Tobacco Oud is also another honorable mention because yeah. this is impossible to find. So if you can't get this, just, Try to hunt down that because yes. that's also really great, it and is. I'll and I'll never be without it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Anyway, thanks for doing this with what me. A, this what is a, great. I yes. feel like we really got some holy grails. The holy grails. Yeah. That is our respective top fives. Our holy grails. A blessing. A blessing from the Lord. Who knows? It could change in a few weeks. But as of right now, that is my top five. Absolutely loving wearing them. Your top five was. Phenomenal. I think um, we kind of killed it. We yeah. kind of killed it, all right? We don't want to brag, but we kind of killed it. No, we want to uh, brag. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, we, yeah. we do. We keep saying we don't want to do things, but we absolutely <laughs> do want to do them. It's intrusive thoughts. Thank you guys for checking out our Holy Grails list. Let us know down in the comments, what are your Holy Grails? Give us a list of five, three, give us your top of all time. We'd love to get a conversation started down in the comments section, uh, and we will see y'all soon. And stay smelly <laughs> always the doctor is out <laughs> so long refinery heads so long patience <laughs> <laughs> i should have called him that yeah <laughs> crap <laughs> my patience nostrils <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> no i, I, I love that i love that